hello to everyone in this video we are going to discuss the examination and investigation part of the interview time death instruction so how to diagnose the IUDF in the clinical method biophysical by ultrasound ultrasound doppler and biochemical markers so in clinical method we have history taking and symphysis fundal height measurement maternal weight gain and maternal abdominal girth measurement in history taking there should be correct gestational age and a history of the previous IUGR baby twin pregnancy history and any history of the maternal cardiac diseases should be considered correct gestational age know the LMP history of regular cycle absence of the hormonal contraception and EDD expected date of delivery the diagnosis of the FGR requires precise knowledge of the gestational age, history of documented date of conception in case of the female having infertility treatment. Now the history of the disorders affecting placental functions. These are so important in history taking maternal vascular diseases such as essential hypertension, diabetes mellitus and collagen disorders. Heavy smokers or alcoholics, if these are the addiction in the mother, then it can be a cause. Symphysis fundal height. Clinically correlate the gestational age after 24 weeks. A lag of 4 cm or more suggests growth restriction. Serial measurement is required. It is a sensitive parameter in 30 to 80 percent case. Measurement of the abdominal girth. Measured at the level of the umbilicus, girth increases by about 2.5 cm per week beyond 30 weeks and at term measured about 95 to 100 cm. Stationary and falling value during second half of the pregnancy suggests IUGR. Maternal weight gain. Decreased maternal weight gain is a relatively insensitive sign of the IUGR baby but have we have to look it fetal kick count patient counts fetal movements starting at 9 a.m. until 10 movements are perceived count is done on the daily basis and patient has to alert her physician if there is less than 10 movements occur within 20 sorry 12 hours on a two consecutive days or no movements are perceived within 12 hours in a single days Kick track it's a tool for the pregnancy health and the mother have to press a button on the kick track whenever he she feels a movement. Biophysical method by ultrasonography. Diagnosis on the basis of the gestational age. Gestational age is certain in estimated fetal weight, abdominal circumference, head to abdomen ratio. In uncertain transverse cerebral diameter into abdominal circumference ratio, femur to abdomen ratio, and fetal pondral index. Estimated fetal weight, the four anatomic landmarks, biparietal diameter, head circumference, abdominal circumference, and femur length. Biparietal diameter, measured at the level of the thalamus and cavum septum pellucidum, proximal outer table, distally inner table, as shown in the diagram. Head circumference. If fetus is affected by the asymmetric IUGR, head circumference remains larger. Usually, head circumference is to abdominal circumference ratio. 85% of IUGR fetuses are detected. Abdominal circumference. Abdominal circumference is single best most sensitive parameter to detect IUGR. It is measured at level of the junction of the left and right portal vein, umbilical vein. Serial measurement of the abdominal circumference and estimation of the fetal weight are most diagnostic to fetal growth restriction. Femur length. Femur length is resumed when beam from the transducer is perpendicular to the sun. Femur length is not affected in the asymmetric IUGF. Head to abdomen ratio. It is a significant value in identifying fetal growth restriction baby with asymmetric head and abdominal ratio. This ratio is gestational age dependent. More congenital anomaly in the sort for gestational age newborn with asymmetric 
head, abdomen, waist में trans cerebral diameter with ratio of abdominal circumference TCD trans cerebral diameter is an accurate predictor of the gestational age when done between 14 weeks and 28 weeks it is rarely affected by fetal growth retardation hence used as an index gestational age in combination with the abdominal circumference ponderal index ultrasound criteria for diagnosis of the fetal malnutrition gestational age independent it is a constant in second part of the pregnancy and normal value is 8.325 plus minus 2.5 with two standard deviation useful in the evaluation of the small baby what is the pondal index pondal index is equal to fetal weight in the gram divided by the third power of the femur length in centimeter into 100 if pondal index is less than 7 it indicates IUDF femur is to abdomen ratio important index for the small fetus with certain gestational age femur length is minimally affected by fetal growth and impairment with abdominal circumference which is most affected normal value of this index is 22 plus minus 2 for restricted it is ratio is more than 23.5 when this ratio is abnormally highly high it strongly supports the fetal growth restriction. Amniotic fluid volume. Reduced amniotic fluid volume is often associated with the asymmetric IUGR. Amniotic fluid index. Mild IUGR is a normal amniotic fluid. In severe IUGR, oligohydromnios incidence is 40%. On ultrasonography, a packet of fluid is less than 1 cm is diagnosed as a oligohydromnios. In this table, the expected accuracy of the ultrasound measurements in a diagnosis of the small babies is given. Now, all the investigations and results in a IUGR. Fetal bipedal diameter may be nor uh, normal in IUGR. Abdominal circumference may be normal or decreased. Head circumference normal. Femur length may be normal or decreased. Head circumference ratio with abdominal circumference normal or increased amniotic fluid index normal or less than 5 doppler waveform analysis increased resistance pondal index normal or decreased now ultrasound doppler parameter doppler velocity meter doppler effect change in the apparent frequency due to relative motion between the source and the observer that is the source and observer means doppler probe and rbc when the sound wave strikes a moving target, the frequency of sound waves reflected back is proportionate to the velocity and direction of the moving object. It is used to determine the value and rate of the blood flowing through maternal vessels. Doppler waveform analysis. It assesses resistance to blood flow. In normal pregnancies, fetal and maternal arteries show low resistance. These are the three race indexes. Systolic is to diastolic ratio, resistance index, and pulse fidelity index. The quantitative analysis of these Doppler indices is important. Doppler vessels with to be studied for the maternal side, uterine artery, placental side, umbilical artery, and in fetal side, arterial is middle cerebral artery and femur fetal artery. In venous, it is ductus and hepatic and umbilical view. uterine arteries doppler and elevated systolic is to diastolic ratio or early diastolic notching goes for the diagnosis of the preeclampsia and IUGR two stage screening one before 23 weeks and other after 23 weeks now the abnormal or uterine artery doppler velocity metry in one side we can see normal and one side is abnormal with notching uterine artery normal impedance to flow the uterine arteries in the first trimester can be seen in the first figure in second normal impedance to flow the uterine artery in early second three trimester and in nor third figure normal impedance to flow the uterine arteries in late second and third trimester
now the we can see difference between the normal and abnormal droplet umbilical artery droplet reflects the placental obliteration umbilical artery advancing gestation progressive rise in the end diastolic velocity meter and decrease in the pulsatility index it has correlation with acid and base balance of body reduced or absent or reversal diastolic flow in umbilical artery indicates the fetal geoparity in absent diastolic flow intrauterine fetal death within 7 days umbilical artery flow what does it tell us it tells the it is the first sign of the hypoxia and growth retardation so it is important to know the umbilical artery flow umbilical artery changes in the umbilical artery waveform are evident only when 60% of the placental blood flow is obliterated normal umbilical artery there is a three first trimester absent diastolic flow in second trimester in early conditions low diastolic flow in late second and third trimester resistance further reduces and more diastolic flow umbilical artery abnormal in abnormal conditions umbilical artery first vein is normal second is umbilical artery is high pulsatility index umbilical artery is absent in diastolic velocity very high pulsatility index pulsation in the umbilical vein can be seen in the third figure and in fourth umbilical artery is reversal of the in diastolic intrauterine fetal death will occur within 48 hours indication for the lscs is this these are the uh, Doppler waveforms. Now the umbilical artery is we can differentiate from the normal with the abnormal. Middle cerebral artery the blood velocity increases, PI decreases with the advancing gestation. Middle cerebral arteries increase diastolic velocity, brain sparing effect or centralization is observed in a a compromised fetus due to cerebral vasodilatation in response to placental insufficiency normal middle cerebral artery waveform show minimal or no diastolic flow umbilical arteries to median cerebral artery ratio is more less than or equal to one identifies fetus at risk for the pfgr and poor neonatal outcome if this is done after 34 weeks then there is no value of this ratio normal abdominal waveforms can be seen in this figure biochemical markers these are two important biochemical markers PAPPA in serum in first trimester of pregnancy is considered a marker for the FGR and erythropoietin level in cord blood is high in IUGR fetus thank you